With loads of business advice flooding the industry, it has never been harder to see the path to success. And you can't take action if you don't have clarity. Get clear on the actionable tips and strategies that will help to scale your business here on Masters in Clarity, the podcast that brings you clarity around messaging, business growth, digital marketing, personal development, and the business owner's journey to success. Let's join our guide, the master of turning clarity into action and lasting impact, Dolores Hirschman. I'm so excited to have this conversation with Jen Morella, someone I've known for a few years now, and I just love her energy, her creativity, and how committed she is to solving big world problems. So let me tell you a little bit about Jen. Jen is an impact travel influencer, clean water initiator. She uses her influence for good. Her mission is to create incredible possibilities of transformation for humankind to live lives of impact, purpose, and courage. Her purpose is to discover humanity, understand a culture, and connect emotionally with people. And as she does that, She's driven to leave a little something behind that can change a life. After starting her career in the New York City agency world, uh, she decided to turn what she learned uh, into her master's and undergrad into social entrepreneurship into action. She has now traveled over 44 countries, impacted an estimate of 13,600 people in seven countries, and continues to grow as an ambassador to young professionals and coaches young women and women in getting their business up and running and thriving. So let me let me introduce you to Jen and let me help me welcome Jen Marilla to the Masters in Clarity podcast. I'm so excited, Jen, to finally kind of nail you down for this combo because I know you've been traveling all over and that's like kind of your signature thing, right? Like you're a free lady. <laughs> so let's start with that. How do we get to this day, 2022, when you do what you love, you don't work really, because when we yeah. do what we love, we don't wake up and have a job, right? Yeah. When you do what you love, you are successful, you are profitable, you, you're you young and you have it all. You have beauty. <laughs> How do we get to this moment? <laughs> oh my God, I love the flattery. Thank you. No, I'm excited to be here. I, you know, it's, it's so funny. Yesterday I was on the phone with my parents and they were, they have a house in upstate New York and they were like, you know, we want to go away with the whole family. Does, you know, this weekend doesn't work for your sister. How about next weekend? I'm like, I'm not here. I'm in Montana. And they're like, you just got back from Europe. And then I was like, yeah. And then my dad's like, I want your life. <laughs> I was like, he just like screams out of nowhere from the other side of the room. And then he's like, you seriously, like, you just where what's in Montana? And I was like, I was like, well, I'm going for like a workshop and then I'm just gonna take a day before and a day after. And they're like, who do you think you are? And I was like, what do you mean? What, I don't understand what's the big deal. Like, first of all, in the United States, like that for me is like I'm not traveling if I stay in the US, right? Yeah, like I never travel the US. I'm like, if I was like, well, I have a conference in like, you know, Italy, then I'd be like, okay, I get it. But I'm like, come on, it's only like a few hours. <laughs> But, yeah, but I, recognize, I think I recognize the older I get, the harder it is for people to be like, how do you move so much? Yeah, because I think you, you, you know, you did the thing of going to college and getting a job from nine to five with a boss where you had to sign in and sign out and let someone know that you were not coming in today. Right. Yes. And and. You know, and all the way fast forward to today, what was that journey like? And I know there were some bumps in the road. There always are. Yep, um, yep. What was that journey like? And and how, what does it look like? Because one day you said, I will be free. Yeah. And then you, whether you were aware of it or not, you made an internal decision to never live in someone else's schedule. Talk to me. Yeah. I mean, it, it all started... Uh... Yeah, graduated with a bachelor's degree. Um, what kick started the whole thing, and I know Dolores, you know the, the whole story, um, was essentially the um, the loss of my brother. I had a younger brother, and he passed away very traumatic. Um, and that was in my early twenties, and I it was my senior year of college, and my entire life flipped upside down. Right, and I come from a you know Cuban family, uh, second generation. Uh, my parents are born in Cuba, immigrated here. I was born here. 
Um, and I was raised by them and my grandparents. My parents are also entrepreneurs. And I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, if you would have told me in high school and college, I'm like, yeah, like I'll run my own business one day, but like, who knows, you know? Um, and my, my brother and I were really close and I thought I had it all figured out. <laughs> I was 21 and I thought I had it all figured out. Um, I was going to get married. I was going to have babies. I was going to buy a house and everything was going to work accordingly. Um, and then it didn't. <laughs> And so I graduated from university um, and it was the year my brother died and I almost didn't graduate to be honest. And then I, I started working um, for two years and then I went back and I did my master's. Um, and then after I did my master's, um, I came back to the US and I worked again in corporate for like three years. And um, I was pretty miserable from the inside. From the outside, everything looked great. I was living in New York. I was working in New York City for a marketing agency as an account manager. I was making good money. Um, I was living life. And for me, it was the constant routine and having to be, I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> I really don't like to be told what to do. And I should have known that. My daughter said it to me when I was a kid. Like, I really don't like to be told what to do. Um, all my boyfriends, ex-boyfriends learned that. Like, do not tell me what to do. My current boyfriend, my current boyfriend now gets it. He's like, I just let you do whatever you want. Like there's no point in. <laughs> and he's like, I'll suggest, like, but you know, at the end of the day, you you are a woman of your smart man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very smart man. My dad says it. He's like, good man, good man. Um, so it it really was um when I was working at corporate, uh, and I loved my boss, I loved my team, um, but I kind of had my come to Jesus moment, you know, where I recognized like I'm not happy, and I believe we are the creators of our reality. We are the co-creators. We co-create every single day. Um, this what's a, what, that's what being a human is, right? That's what, that's what the privilege of, of being born into this world is that you get to do that. Um, and I started off as a travel blogger and I was always the kind of person that always wanted to do something that would help other people. Um, in return, I didn't really realize that it would heal me. Um, you know, at that point it had been about five years since my brother had passed and I didn't really grief my brother's loss. Mm -hmm. um, going, yeah. Yeah. I, I was really healing a lot, a lot, a lot that went through with that process because it happened so sudden, um, you know, family got sick, other people, like, it was just a lot within those five years. And so I didn't really grieve his loss. And so um, I, I said, okay, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to leave and I'm going to travel the world with clean water filters. And I'm going to become a travel blogger. Like if there's anything I know, it's marketing, right? Like I know that if you're going to do something, you got to find a niche and you got to stand out and you got to be different. And yeah. it's not like you have to like, you know, I don't have to stand with like a neon sign or anything, but like you yourself have to tell your story, right? Yeah. That's the most yeah. important thing when you're building any business, it doesn't matter what it is. And so I started pitching to brands and telling them the story and, and it worked. And lo and behold, you know, I did that for about three and a half years. And it was good. It was a good run. I learned a lot about the influencer industry and, and the marketing industry and all this stuff. And, and you know, um, I don't regret it because I got to travel the world and essentially I got paid to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I never made as much money as I make now, uh, which means I never hit six figures. Uh, the most I ever made in my business was about 80,000, 90, almost close enough. Yeah. And then um, in, was it late 2018? Um, in 2018, I started towards the end of 2018, I started to get asked to get, you know, speak on stages about building a purposeful brand, um, uh, influencer marketing, all those things. And I've always loved to public speak. And so for me, I was like, this is so fun. And then I started to get people reaching out to me, asking me how to build a brand online. And I was like, and, and I, I recognized that I was coaching people and people were getting results and I was doing it for free. And I was like, wait a minute, there's something huh. wrong here. Like I'm spending half my day on the phone and I'm not getting paid for it. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> so I, I created my very first online course and it was how to build a bit, uh, an online brand. And that was my first $11,000 launch. And I remember like the, I, I did a, a Facebook live, I did a Facebook live um, and then pitched at the end of the, you know, the hour and the Facebook live, the, the program that I created. 
And within the last 15 minutes, I had two people buy right away. And it was a $500 course. And when I tell you that as soon as the, the live finished and I closed my laptop, the tears were running down my face. So I was so happy because I couldn't believe it. Like somebody within 15 minutes, just, I made a thousand dollars. I was like, what is this? And then as the days went on, it just kept going and going. And so I was like, oh, there's definitely something here. And so I, I began to pivot in like November, December of 2000. 18. And in those three months in September, it was so funny. My account was like, what have you been doing? Because from September to December, I went from like, you know, making peanuts to 50 grand right away in those three months. And um, yeah. And then 2019, I really just took it off. I relaunched my YouTube channel and then I began to pivot. And then, well, we all know what happened in 2020. <laughs> yes. We all know that <laughs> everyone got stuck at home. And then and then that was it. But the, the, the biggest thing for me, and, and it's always been the foundation of what I wanted to create was it's a ripple effect. I don't believe in doing it for someone. I believe in teaching someone the tools so that they can go out and do it. I believe we live in an infinite universe and everything comes around and goes around. There is enough for everyone. If you believe there's enough for you, right. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you have to internally internalize and recognize, right. If you actually believe that there's enough for you. Um, and so I give my clients the tools to be able to grow um and monetize and create life the lives that they want to have to travel to make money to be with their families and it doesn't have to be you know building an online course or being a coach it's just doing the things that they love i work with women who you know who want to make you know enough money to be able to support their family and not have to travel the world and do all things they just want to spend time with their kids you know and that's beautiful uh, so yeah, I mean, to me, the, the biggest thing is to be able to create a life that you're happy and you're proud of, you know, if you came to me and you were like, I want to make donuts, look, let's make the best fucking donuts in the world. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. let's do it. Yeah. And so, so yeah, that's, that's essentially the, the, how it all started and how it kicked off. I love that. And I love how, you know, for most of us, people, people say, well, I want to start a business and I want to go and charge. 10 grand for an hour with me and whatever. Mm -hmm. I love how you, the business led you. So there was no, no, no second thoughts or self-doubt in the sense of you were already creating an impact. You were just not aware of it or not hadn't structured it as a business just yet. So by the time, yeah, there's always the, the first sale and the first moment. Yeah. Um, but it was seamless. You knew you were adding value. You were, you put value over first over making money and so the making money just followed and 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 today I know you are very specific in who you work with because I know you work mostly with women yeah. and you get them to the first six three figures like six figures like the first three numbers on the other side of the coma right like <laughs> like the, like the hundred thousand dollar mark which is for any business owner what is it that they say that um only 1% or only 5% of business owners reach the six figures in the first three years or some statistic like that. Yeah. So you actually are committed to making this women not just start a business, but stay in business. I think that's the hardest thing. You know, I think I've worked with so many people in all the years and I can, the moment I get on a call with someone, I can, I know who's going to stick around. Uh, and it's just like, um, it's just like dating. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I don't know if you remember the story. So I know we're, you're married. You've been married for a long time. Oh, yeah. Time. I remember dating. <laughs> but I'm like, not that old. <laughs> go on a date with someone. And in the first five to 10 minutes, like, I could tell, like, this is going to, this could continue or this is going to end here. You know what I mean? Um, and it's the same thing with business, right? It's, it's the, the passion that people have. It's the drive. The biggest thing is the why. That's, that's the why. And so let's, let's dig into this because we can talk about other things, but my experience of the six figures, it took me three years to go from zero to 100. It took me one year to go from 100 to 200, mm -hmm. literally like one month. Mm -hmm. What is it? There's like, there's a something from there's the 45 that yeah. I've been trending, 45, which let's talk it in monthly numbers. I would say, I would say that the sweet spot is between 80 and 100. Like just that little hump yeah, so from the seven grand a year, well, six grand a year to the 10 grand a year. Well, you really need to, we need to make $8,300 yes, to be exact. Right. 
Yes. $8,333 a month will get you $100,000. And yes. I remember the year that, because I was in a program that if I made 100, I could advance to the next level. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. wanted to be with the cool kids. <laughs> um, and I remember, and I'm, and I'm very, actually, I can't, unfortunately, I can't make things up or lie. I just, I can't. So I had to do it for real. And I yeah. made 101. <laughs> and so now I qualified. Yeah. Um, but what is it? So it's an average of like the from the range of four, five thousand dollars a month to the eight thousand three hundred yeah. is the biggest step. What is it? It's not that somebody can do it, you can do it one time, right? So usually people that come to me, they'll be like, Okay, I hit you know eight thousand dollars last, last month. month, but now I'm at three or I'm at two. Like, how do I do it consistently? And I think it takes, honestly, I think it's, it's two things. Number one, recognizing that you have a business. And what I mean is, is that you're that. so wired to work for other people that when you become an entrepreneur, it is all on you. And I know you're like, well, of course you're everything. If somebody's listening to this, you're like, duh, that's logical. I'm like, no, but like, take a second. Like the way your brain is actually wired is that you're always asking for permission to do the next thing. So when you're building a business, the person that you have to ask permission for is you. So what happens if you don't trust yourself? What happens if you don't think you're worthy of receiving money? What happens if you don't think you're, you, you're capable of helping other people? You stay stuck in where you are. You're not going to grow. And you do the dance where you have a nine to five and you have a passion, or you've quit your nine to five and you're struggling hard to make ends meet. So you're still doing the little odd odds here and there, but you won't commit to building that business, right? And that is the difference. That is, I would say that's like 80% of what happens when people come to me, right? Most of the time, other, someone else is running their business. And what I mean by someone else is their clients. It's the fear of failure. It's their family and friends and, and what they're saying behind the scenes because they've quit their job and all the things. When if people could just recognize like you own a business, if you had an actual brick and mortar, if you paid to rent a spot, you would not be second guessing yourself whatsoever because you have rent to pay versus when you are a service provider and you're in the online space, you're working from home. So and there is I'm that. taking a week off and, yes. and my so mom wants me to go for lunch. The, exactly. So that is the biggest, the biggest thing that I think stops people. The second thing is when you see the numbers and by the numbers, I mean, get crystal clear on how much you're making and how much you're spending and how much you actually need to make in order, like work backwards in order to reach that $8,000 mark or $10,000 a month mark, right? Like how many packages do you need? How many clients do you need? How many do you actually need to sell? And then fucking sell it. If you need to sell five spots to hit five grand to meet that $10,000 mark, don't, you know, post a post or like get one story and then be like, well, you know, nobody listened. You posted one time, like keep going. And then, it, I mean, it's a full circle, right? Because people don't show up because they get scared or they get nervous about what people are going to think, so. So so I love this because there is a, like a, like a, like a, you can call it a vortex. Yeah. Or you can call it a Bermuda Triangle of Ooh. people getting lost in that, like, you know, five, three to five a month, all the way to the eight. And yeah. most of us, I, and I remember myself at the time, it felt like a brick wall. And we went at it in a tactical way. Like, oh, I need to fix my website. I need to, uh, yeah, post some more. I need to hire an expert who tells me blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is that that all could work. But if foundationally, you are in a hobby business, you don't take yourself seriously, you don't have boundaries with your family, and you're not really committed, you can throw money at the problem with experts, you're not going to do it. So, so I think it's this game, it's your brain. It's, it's so your much brain. of your brain that like, it's so much of you that keeps you stuck in your way. And when you recognize that, that's when you're able to make that the game changer. Um, and if, so if you're listening to this and you are in that range of not yet at the, at the six figure a year, then ask yourself, what is getting in your own way? Because I know the answer. It's you. But mm -hmm. what of you? What belief? What, what in Spanish would be creencia? What are you telling yourself in your head that is getting in the way? Yeah. Because we unlock that. We unlock anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's literally what it is. Um, once that shift happens, 
And it literally is like a switch. That's it. And that's that, at least for me, that's what it was. It's like recognizing, like, I knew it was in my own way. I didn't know what I was doing. And then when I recognized it, I was like, holy shit, it's been me this whole time. Like, I got it. And, 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 and like you said, you can have the website, you can have the business coach, you can do the thing. But if you don't have the foundational piece of selling a product and doing it, people, most people quit. Like, yeah. we're like, this is too hard. Nobody's buying. Well, you only talked about it once a week. Of course, nobody's going to buy. There's so much noise on the media and social media. Like, you have to talk about it consistently. I love that. I know that. Um, so, what does our future look like? What does the next, what will the next 12 months bring for Jen? Oh, uh, the next 12 months, a TED talk. <laughs> that's the first thing I want to say. <laughs> yeah, a TED yeah, talk. That, that is coming. Way. Yeah, a TED talk. Um, the next 12 months, hopefully, well, not hopefully, this time next year, we'll, we'll hit the seven figure mark. So I, I'm excited. I'm very happy and proud. Uh, can't believe I, I'm actually saying that. <laughs> but yes, we will hit the seven figure mark. Um, bigger team. Uh, more expansion, more help, more, you know, serving more people. Um, I'd love to start to dip in more into my passions. And what I mean by that is like, um, I posted something the other day that I had somebody in my DMs reach out to me and they're like, I really want to work with you. But like, I have this side hustle, I have a nine to five and I have the side hustle and, you know, I can't commit to it because it's not making me money yet. And so until it makes me money, like I'm not going to commit to another mastermind or another program, whatever. And I was like, how many side hustles do you have? And she is a travel blogger and she also does um, social media manager and the social media management business makes her money. But in her eyes, she's also in finance, right? So she has a nine to five and then she has these two jobs, right? So the social media management company makes her money. And I'm like, yeah, but you're making money from your business. She's like, no, 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 from the other business. And I was like, oh, I was like, hold on one second. So, so you're telling me that you have this side hustle. You have, first of all, you have a nine to five that funds both the side hustle and the one side hustle, side hustle that's really successful isn't the side hustle that you want to do. So you're still doing the passion project, but you're complaining about not being able to pay bills. <laughs> and she just looked at me. She was like, well, and I was like, okay, listen, there's only two, when you start a business, you either start and you have a lot of money saved up or you have a, you know, uh, um, an investment company that has invested in your company and you have money to be able to fund it and start it, et cetera. Or like most people, you have a nine to five and that nine to five is your angel investor or that, that passion project that you have, right? Or you don't have a nine to five and you have one company, one business that makes you the money that funds your passion. Mm -hmm. At some point you have to put on your big girl pants, especially if you have a family and you have to pay bills and you have to do the thing that brings in the money to then potentially be able to do the passion project. And I'm like, recognize that you're not, it's never going to be like, this is never going to happen. This is just going to be on hold right now until you build the revenue and get it to a place that you're comfortable so that you can do what you want to do. And she had like a light bulb moment and she's like, oh my God. And so I think for me, it's going to be able to start really doing what I started, like going back in full circle, uh, doing more of the water initiatives, the giving back, um, the impact, the social enterprise, all that stuff. Um, yeah. So I would probably start doing that this time next year. Um, cause I'm now I'm at a place where I have a cup, right? I have a full cup and I can give, you can't fill from an empty cup. I've yeah. Up, yeah. Right? I love that. <laughs> I mean, I love, and, 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 and the truth is that yes, you, when you, I get this, I'll do this. But when we have a passion, we also have permission to bring in, at least in conversation, our passion into your business. Uh, which is not always the case in a nine to five because you have to work within a box of what is acceptable in that right. environment. Right. But I know that you already are talking about your passion in your nine, your nine to five where you are the boss. Right. Um, so yes, there's some weight, but at the same time, you're just one person. So I love, yeah. I love that you're uh, going to be buying yourself time and that's what scaling means it means to happen for me like masters in clarity runs without me i mean as far as the running of the company i put one hour a week yeah. um then i serve my clients but um but that's what it buys you it buys you the time to open a new business or start a new project or for some of our listeners 
have that baby and spend most of the time with the baby, knowing you have a solid business that you've built that is running and you're just the chairwoman of the business instead of the, the jack of all trades. Right. Or Jill of all trades. Yeah. Um, okay. So Ms. Jen, where can people find you? Find me on social media. You can find me on my, well, my new website is launching. I'm so excited. But you, right now you can find me on Instagram at jennifer.marilla. Um, and you can reach out to me there. I'm always hanging out there. You can find me on YouTube. You put me in Google at Jennifer Marilla. It'll all come up. <laughs> I love I that. I love that. the shit out of my name. <laughs> I love that. So go ahead, go Google and stalk Jen Marilla, M-O-R-I-L-L-A and Google. And thank you so much for bringing your wisdom and hanging out with us. Thank you for having me. This was awesome. Bye. So how do you get to six figures? And what is it in the journey to six figures that would get in the way? And if you think it's something you don't know, then listen to my interview with Jen Marilla and you'll discover that what you're missing, the one thing you need to do to go to your six figures in your business is actually easy to find and you have it right under your nose. So check it out. Thank you for listening to this episode of Masters in Clarity. If you loved today's show, please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. Share this episode with two people in your world. And as a gift, go to mastersinclarity.com slash free to download free clarity resources. Join your host, Dolores Hirschman, next time to continue forging a clear path to your impactful success.